Hello boys and girls, today I'd like to talk to you about what I call class one problems. They are kinematics problems in two dimensions, so these are projectile motion problems, in which, well, class one problem is distinguished from the fact that whatever it is that's happening is being launched with no initial velocity in the y direction. This is the key statement of a class one problem. So this will be something rolling off of a table or uh, something like that, generally rolling off of a table or a cliff or a train station or whatnot. So I wanna show you two examples of class one problems because there are only two examples of class one problems. The two things that you might be asked to find in a class one problem are, ooh, no, I can think of just one more. <laughs> well, we'll have three examples of these then. Okay, so the things, the simplest things that you could be asked to find are, for instance, how far the thing goes, you might be asked to find delta x, or you could be asked to find the initial. And of course, the initial is the initial in the x direction. And these two things are related to each other by the time, and that equation is just how far something has gone is its velocity in the x direction multiplied by how long it has been going. So we're gonna use that equation and we'll either be solving for this sucker or solving for that sucker, and you'll see that they're both really simple, which is why these are class one problems. They're a fine place to start. The only trick is going to be to find the time, and we'll probably use this dimension, which will be given in these two problems, in order to find the time. And the third class would be to find that height or something like that. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna jump into the first problem that I have prepared, and that is a boulder rolling off of a 64 meter high cliff at 13 meters per second. How far from the base of the cliff does that sucker land? So let's draw ourselves a little picture. First of all, it is a class one problem because this boulder is going horizontally on the cliff. Please excuse that man who's trying to talk over me. He's driving me nuts. But he's got, this boulder has some initial velocity and we'll write V naught initial equal, sorry, V initial in the X direction equals 13 meters per second. Oh, whew, he's gone. And what we're trying to find is how far the boulder has gone here, da 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 as it makes this beautiful parabola crash. Where is the divot going to be from the boulder? <clears throat> so, here's our plan. We know that the cliff is 64 meters high. And we, well, let's do this the direct route. It says, how far from the base does it land? Well, I'll tell you, delta x is the initial velocity in the x direction times time. And this is the only thing that we need because we know the velocity in the x direction already. We simply need to know how long this that it will take to fall. So let's consult our, um, oh, this is an x direction equation. It is the only x direction equation that we have besides just stating that the velocity is constant in the x direction. I'm gonna go to the kinematic equations that I've written down in the y direction. Here they are. We've got the classic. Oh man, what do we know in the y direction? Let's get, let's get a little bit organized. We know in the y direction that the acceleration in the y direction is negative 9.81 meters per second squared. We know that delta y, ooh, we do know delta y. Delta y is 64 meters. A lot of people make this mistake. They write down delta y equals 64 meters because that's the distance between here and here. But delta y is y final minus y initial, and that is not 64 meters, it's negative 64 meters. Please note that negative sign right there. The other thing we know in the y direction is it's not moving in the y direction, which is what makes this a class one problem. It's not moving in the y direction at the beginning. So I'm gonna find these three variables in an equation, and I'm also looking for time. All right, check the list of the equations right here. We have the initial velocity in the y direction, delta y, a y, and time. The initial velocity in the y direction, delta y, a y, and time. The classic will be perfect for this case. I'm gonna to go to another sheet of paper now. Get ready, here we go, here we go. Watch this. Delta y equals v naught in the y direction times time. I'm not gonna put a delta there, I'll just put time. Plus one half acceleration in the y direction times time square. And I get to plug in the fact that this is zero. The class one problems are lovely because of that. And then I write delta y is one half the acceleration in the y direction times time squared. Want time, time is equal to two times delta y over a sub y, all screwed it. Now, of course, it's gonna be plus or minus, but we're gonna say that when the rock hits the ground is after we started looking. So we're gonna choose this positive root. There we go. Yeah, we choose that positive root right there. Okay, let's find the time. 
and the time, oh, you wanna go directly to the equation? We could go directly to the equation. We could do that. We could say delta x then equals the initial velocity in the x direction, v naught comma x, times that time, which is the square root of two times delta y over a y. I'm not even gonna find the time first. I'm just gonna use this cool equation and plug it in and find my complete answer. Watch this. I've got v naught x, and that was given as 13 meters per second. Check me, don't let me make any mistakes here. Then inside this screw, I'm gonna have two times negative, uh-oh, negative 64 meters, and then I'm dividing that by, am I gonna screw to negative number here? Is this an imaginary problem? Is this bold or not real? What's going on? No, see, that's also negative. That a sub y, I'm gonna get negative 9.81 meters per second square. And then I'm gonna do all that stuff. Watch me. 13 times the screw of two times negative 64, and, uh, ooh, I guess I can't really close my parentheses because that would be closing the screwed out. So then I'm gonna divide by negative 9.81 and then close my parentheses. I find that that boulder has gone 46.9 meters. I probably just wanna do two sig figs. I don't know. Yeah, probably just two sig figs. So I'm gonna write down my answer is 46, no, sorry, just two sig figs. My answer is 47 meters. Cool, check that on your own and we'll do another problem in a minute.